Thanks, Ken. I'm going to go ahead and show my screen here. Give me one second. Hi, everybody. My name is Jessica Smith I'm with Dynamics 365 Pros, like Ken said. Um, Ken, you can see my screen okay? Yes, I can. Okay, great. So um, as Ken said, we're going to go through the basics of enabling or configuring editable grids for your organization. And today we're going to focus on doing that, that for the case entity. Um, editable grids is, is controlled and, and configured um, on an entity by entity basis. Um, so that's where we're going to begin. Um, this is assuming that you know how to get to the customizations area of your environment. And that's where I am right now. And I've got the case entity open. Um, you'll see the general area. Some of you are probably familiar with this. Um, now that we have um, Edible Grids available, we'll see this Control tab here. And this is where you go ahead and add the control for Edible Grids per each entity. Um, when you do it here at the main level, at the um, customizations area of the main entity in this control area, you're actually enabling it for what's called the main grid, which is wherever you see the case entity in the sitemap. So when you go to service and you click on cases, this is where you're enabling um, editable grids for. So we're going to hop right into it. We're going to click add control and you'll see here um, the editable grid option. And this is assuming that you have um, Dynamics CRM 2016 update one, I believe that was in December or greater. So um, if you have the proper version, you will see this editable grid option here. So we're going to go ahead and click Add. Once we do that, we'll see a new line added here in the controls. And it's going to ask us basically what interface we'd like to enable Editable Grids for. Um, today, we're just going to focus on the web interface. That's when you're signing in through the URL um, to your online or on-premise environment. Um, you'll be able to get this, um, the Editable Grids functionality. You can also enable it for phone and tablet, but we're not going to go into that today. That will be for future. Um, webinars. So there's also some other things that we can do with Edible Grids, which I'm also not going to go into today, but you can do, um, you can enable um, lookup filtering. I'll talk about that when we're working with the actual Editable Grid, nested views and group by columns. Again, we'll probably cover that in a, in a future webinar. So for, um, it's this simple. We're just going to go ahead and click Save. And it's going to take a few seconds to update because it is, it is going out and making this update immediately. And then we're going to go ahead and publish. And here we go. So as that's publishing, um, what we're also going to cover today is actually enabling editable grids for a subgrid. And I'm going to pop into that after I show you how to work with the main grid. Um, after you've added that control for the main grid, we will um, go into how to add a um, editable grid for a subgrid for the case entity on the account form. So I'm going to go ahead and close this, and I'm just going to go to my service area, CRM, and I'm going to click on cases here. And you'll see now this looks a little bit different. Um, you'll see that the um, actually the columns are a little bit wider than they were before, and you'll see this group by option. So this actually is an editable grid. Um, you'll see in here that there's certain fields that are locked down that we can't edit, but then there are several that we can change the problem. Um, if we had a text field in here, we could simply type in the text. Um, we can change the origin. A couple things you can't do um, or that are locked down um, will be any status um, state code. So the status is you can't change um, for um, cases and opportunities and things like that, you won't be able to change the actual customer in the editable grid. You have to open up the record and change that there. Um, similar to when you're doing bulk edit, same kind of functionality, functionality exists. That's usually locked down. Um, and then anything that has like field security on it. So um, if there is field security um, enabled or configured on a, a particular field, 
um, within that entity, then it will also be secure in the editable grid. Um, Read-only um, formatting on a form will not be acknowledged by the editable grid because that's a form functionality. So if you have a particular field that's read-only on the form, just keep in mind it will not be read-only in your editable grid. You'll need to either um, configure field security um, for that field, remove it from your view, um, or you can actually um, add JavaScript to control the editing of that. So we can click in here, you know, make changes um, real quick. You can either tab off to another column and it'll actually save. Or if I scroll over here, I'll see these little, this little save icon here and the refresh icon. So you can save instantly or click the refresh. Pretty basic. If you want to open the line, the easiest way to do that is just to click all the way over here in the left-hand side and then double click and that'll open up the record. Okay, so I'm gonna hop back in here and show you a couple other things. So the nice thing about editable grids is yes, they're great to use, um, but some users might, might wanna work with this um, view in the old way. So you'll see this button up here. Once you've enabled the editable grids for an entity, you'll see this show as, and it can actually click back to the read-only grid, which is nice. So then I have the functionality back where I can actually click on the customer link and go to the account record, whereas in the Edible Grid view, I do not have that option. Um, so it's a couple things to keep in mind when, when configuring. Just be mindful of the columns that you have, um, the data that you want to enter. Text fields are great to add in here, so you can just simply type. Um, if you want to, um, it is editing one at a time. So um, if you want to bulk edit, you would do the same click on um, edit function that you would have done previously and click on edit and that'll open up the form for you to do a bulk edit. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and hop back into our um, solution here and I'm going to go up to the account record, account entity, and I'm going to go to the form. I know I've got a cases subgrid on my account form, my standard out-of-the-box account form here. And I'm going to go ahead and enable editable grids for that as well. Now, you can enable editable grids for an entity um, by the, using the control. It's the same, same functionality. You can do this on the form for a subgrid without having the main grid control added. So um, you can have editable grids on a form without having to have editable grids here in the main form, which is kind of nice. Um, I, I could see certain situations where that would be relevant. Keep in mind when you're enabling um, this control on your subgrids that the subgrid will take up a little bit more space. So you might want to um, think about accommodating that. You might want to change the you know, default little teeny tiny um, subgrid that we have here for the cases. We might want to make that a little bit bigger and stretch over a little bit um, more area as well as make it a little bit wider and allow some more room for lines. So I'm just going to click on the controls. Because I have um, editable grids enabled at the main form, um, it's asking me if I want to use the template that I have there. So that's for um, in the situations where you had lookup filters and um, further grouping configured and things like that, you can apply that template here rather than having to reconfigure those things again, which is really nice. Um, if I just clicked on it here, it's just going to simply add the very simple um, uh, formatting that I had, uh, control configuration that I had done at the um, main grid level, okay? And then I can further configure it, regardless if I use a template to create it or not, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then I'm going to save and publish this. So the lookup filtering that I've kind of talked about a couple times, that is in reference to, um, for example, if you have the contact for um, the account um, in the, or for, I'm sorry, for the case in the view, um, would you want to add a contact? You probably only want to add contacts that belong to that customer that are also assigned to the case. So adding that lookup filter um, is the same concept of adding the lookup filter on your forms. Um, so if you're familiar with that, you kind of know what I'm talking about. I'm going to go ahead and go over to accounts now. Yep. 
and open up just one of these accounts and we'll see that editable grid at the very bottom. In any case, subgrid. Let that load. So you'll see now I have the group by option here too and you'll see it takes up a little bit more space um, than it used to. And then if I scroll over, I've got all of those same columns. This is the active view, um, active um, cases view um, that I was looking at earlier. You can have whatever view you want on here. It doesn't matter um, as long as you just add that control. Um, and then I can click in here and make changes. And tab off and that'll go ahead and save it. So real simple, um, it's actually you know, very straightforward to configure the basics of it. Um, there's not much to it, but you, there's a lot of functionality, like I said, um, with the grouping by and the inline grids and, and the lookup filters that you can really make this tool um, help your organization with your data entry and your, um, you know, making fewer clicks for your users. Um, these kinds of things can help. So that's pretty much the, the gist of today's basics with um, adding the editable grade control. Um, so we'll be, like Ken said, we're going to go ahead and take, um, uh, do these every three, um, every month, I think at the third Tuesday of every month. So we look forward to you guys attending the next one. We're not sure what it'll be yet. It might be a di deeper dive into edible grids and it might be um, something else completely different, but we look forward to sharing our tips with you um, over your coffee. Hope you have a good day. Thank you, Jess. Uh, so you've got the slide up with a couple of uh, contact points for us. Uh, we've got our support email, our training email, and then, of course, everything else. Uh, we do have a sales at uh, email if you'd like to contact sales and, and see about uh, working with us. Uh, if you do have any questions, please let us know. We're going to start putting a, all of these sessions up on our website, including all of the upcoming sessions, so you can join us. You can see what's coming up and pick and choose the ones that make sense for you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we appreciate you joining. Uh, this was uh, Coffee with the Pros, and today we had uh, Jess showing us editable grids. Thanks for your time. Talk to you soon.